right, soccer fans, welcome back into the Ontario Soccer Centre Stadium Fieldhouse as we get you set for our final match here at the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. And let's throw things down to our PA announcer, Sandy. Gary Miller Charity Shield match. Please put your hands together for the away team dressed in black and white, the Markham Soccer Club. Our home team for this afternoon's contest dressed in red, please welcome the Ottawa TFC. And now to introduce the starting lineups for today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match. Starting with our away team, the Markham Soccer Club. Wearing number zero, Gurleen Tour. Wearing number four, Raquel Alexander. Wearing number six, Holly Whelan. Wearing number 10, Madison Mariani. Wearing number 11, Sauve Dian. Wearing number 14, Samantha Gravina. Wearing number 15, Ava Beckett. Wearing number 18, Emma Warren. Wearing number 22, Sofia Leovas. Wearing number 27, Farah Yacoub. Wearing number 37, Paige Chiusolo. Head coach, Laura Goss. Assistant coach Richard Alexander, assistant coach Sarah Alexander, and assistant coach Sina Azimi. And now for the home team, Ottawa TFC. Wearing number four, Rachel Vermeer. Wearing number seven, Katie Fee. Wearing number eight, Leah Francoeur. Wearing number nine, Devin Vermeer. Wearing number 10, Flavie Dubé. Wearing number 12, Maya Galco. Wearing number 14, Jessica Boyle. Wearing number 16, Riley Bonadi. Wearing number 17, Paige Robert. Wearing number 19, Danica Birch. And wearing number 55, Mackenzie Curran. Team manager, Patrick Boyle. Team head coach Pavel Kankura. And now introducing our match officials who were appointed for today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match. Our referee, Miss Julia Friesen. Assistant referee, Angelina Baldino. Assistant referee, Michaela McBride. And our fourth official, Daniel Jacob. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome special guests with us today, representing the Miller family, Cindy Miller, Stephanie, Jeremy, Brianna, Josh, and Gary and Cindy's beautiful granddaughter, Aubrey. <laughs> Along with Joey Lombardi, Rex Director and Ontario Women's Under-20 Director. Ontario Soccer welcomes its community to participate in the inaugural edition of the renamed OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield in Gary Miller's honour, an event designed to celebrate OPDL license holders for their achievements while contributing to charity organizations in Ontario. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to recognize this year's under-17 girls division OPDL league champions, Ottawa TFC, and the North Toronto Soccer Club. I'd like to call upon the team captains of Ottawa TFC and North Toronto to accept the OPDO League Champions Plate and League Champions Banner on behalf of the teams and clubs.
Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand, please, for your 2021 OPDL League Champions. And now, if you're able, please stand for the playing of our national anthem. All right, soccer fans, let's get you set for opening kickoff here at the Girls Under 17 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. It's our final match here over the weekend. We've played six matches over two days. This is our sixth match as we get set for the opening kickoff here between Markham and White with black shorts, black socks, taking on Ottawa TFC, wearing a full red kit, white numbers along the back. Should be a great match here, as both of these teams having stellar OPDL campaigns, going 14 wins, one draw, zero losses in the campaign this year as i just pull up the stats here. It was Ottawa TFC with a supreme effort in four, uh, excuse me, in 15 matches, 97 goals for, just six conceded, a plus 91 goal differential. And even though Markham finishing with the same 14 win, one draw, zero loss record, only finding the net 57 times in 15 matches, conceding just 10 against a plus 47 goal differential. Markham will defend the goal to your broadcast right. They'll work right to left across your screen as Ottawa TFC gets set to take the pitch. Should be a great match here between these two squads. And again, we round out the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield here live at the Ontario Soccer Fieldhouse. Getting set for the girls under 17 kickoff. Starting keepers for this one, Markham will turn to Gurleen Tor. And for Ottawa TFC, their captain, Paige Roberts, will start between the sticks. My name's Nico Cardarelli. We've had a great effort from all the people behind the scenes on the broadcast side, on the in-house operations side. Big tip of the cap to everyone who has put in hours of work here, not only this weekend, but leading up to this weekend. And of course, navigating through the tricky times that COVID presents. A excellent job by all the staff in-house here, executing those safety protocols, making sure People are masking, and once again, a great crowd on hand here for our final match at the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. Markham will kick us off, 
And TFC, Toronto FC, is the official founding premier partner of Ontario Soccer, as well as the presenting partner for the Ontario Player Development League, the province's youth high performance league. Their commitment to the game in Ontario is unrivaled. Visit torontofc.com for tickets and more. Raquel Alexander stands over top the ball. And we are underway here in the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield as Ottawa TFC taking possession away from Markham off the opening kickoff and now it'll track out for a throw. Leovis will pick it up for Markham to toss in just on her own side of half. Markham playing a kind of hybrid 4-3-3, four, 4-4-2. Three, three, four, four, You'll see the midfielders shift at times. And Ottawa TFC responding with a 4-4, four, four, kind of 1-1, one, one, a 4. It kind of adapts as well as Markham tracking in their own defensive third and unable to get the clearance out was Koss picking it up here and Getting it up the pitch was Markham as taking control there. Captain Mariani stripped away from her. Riley Bonet, she comes up with it. Mariani gets it back and Ottawa TFC will try control. They slow things down and pull it back as Devin Vermeer plays to the far side on the switch. One of the two center backs, Galco, she ends up giving it away and now Markham will try counter it's quickly knocked out for a throw-in Whelan tosses short gets it right back from the throw and gives it away to Galco her initial clearance secured by Francoeur as Ottawa TFC move the ball across half with good possession here quickly it's knocked down nice defensive work by Sauve Dean as Dean advancing the ball over now it's controlled by Warren into the middle Jakub, she plays out wide. Touch over to Whalen as Markham play it back through their defensive unit. Beckett, quick touch. Now it's controlled by Dean. Head up, looks for an option and finds one along the near line. Gravina, her attempt initially blocked. 50-50 and it's off a Markham player and it should be an Ottawa TFC throw and it is. Headed on from the throw by Flavi Dubé and it'll be controlled by Warren, pressured by Bonet, then knocked out for a Markham throw-in. From the toss, defended well that time by Mackenzie Curran for Ottawa TFC and now it's controlled by Galco. She's pressured, Galco pulls to her left foot, advances it up, but oh, able to take possession. Nice hustle there by Danielle Birch. Played ahead, quickly Emma Warren there defensively for Markham. It's headed forward now for Dubé, her attempt from distance out for a goal kick, but Promising looks there from Ottawa TFC early in this match. Goal kick played short. The keeper, Tor, plays to her back line. Dean playing it over to Warren. It'll now be controlled by Ottawa TFC's Devin Vermeer. Under pressure, Vermeer playing it ahead. Quick touch, Dubé tries to thread the needle there but Dean comes over defensively and makes the stoppage. Warren, her pass picked off, nice job by Jessica Boyle to step up in anticipation. Flicked on, there's a one-time attempt after the ball fell to the foot of Leah Francoeur but it's easily handled by the Markham keeper. Tour, her drop kick picked off by Ottawa TFC and now controlled by Boyle. She plays one forward, Tour a little slow to come off her line at first, but easily handles it for Markham. She bowls it out to her back line and quickly touched ahead for Yakub. Ferry Yakub plays to the near flank where Warren takes possession. Closed down, nice pressure there presented by Bonade. 
Sauvé Dean under pressure. Dean does well to hold possession, but then her pass picked off. Quick one, two, receiving it is Rachel Vermeer. She made the run ahead, but then unable to hold possession. It ricochets off the foot of Beckett, and then Beckett tracks back for a partial clearance. Secured by Fee, she crosses one in, just out of the reach of the oncoming runner. Tour thought it may have been a back pass, so she plays it with her feet. Here's a chance, the cross knocked away by Dean, who did well to get in front of that cross off the foot of Riley Bonade. Ottawa TFC from the throw and volley cross to the far post, Fee running onto it, crosses back in front, pinballing around, Ottawa TFC can't get a clear shooting opportunity. And now Markham gains shape in a good sliding tackle there by Liova to get the clearance and it's out for a bit of confusion here, but I think Markham will get the throw, and they do. So good job by Sophie, Sophia Liova and the rest of the Markham back line to bend but not break under pressure. And now they'll try work out across the half, but running out of room along the sideline was Chiusolo, and it's out for an Ottawa TFC throw. From the throw, Markham take possession. Dean closed down quickly, stripped of the ball, but backing her up there was Beckett. Headed on by Rachel Vermeer. She does well to hold possession as she plays it back for her sister, Devin Vermeer. The two under pressure and coming away with it for Markham is Gravina. They try to find the runner on the switch in Chio Solo, but she can't track to the ball. It's going towards the touchline, stays in play. Markham taking possession here. Trying to generate something into the attacking third. Jakub under pressure, but does well to pick out the option along the near line. Gravina under pressure. Defended brilliantly there, and it's out for a Markham throw in. Rachel Vermeer, who made the initial defensive play, does well to keep that ball within the boundaries, and it's cleared out to half. Secured now by Riley Bonade. She picks out a runner through the middle. And Jessica Boyle. Boyle switches out to the far flank as Katie Fee takes it. She tries to cross one in, but Dean all the way over there defensively with the stoppage. A quick throw. And that tracks out for a goal kick. Nice idea from Ottawa TFC, but the attacker never able to track that ball as running onto it was Bonade. Check that, it was Birch. Eighth minute of action. First half here, 2.45 minutes. If we're tied at the end of regulation, we go straight to penalty kicks. But we are a long way from that happening. And based on the way both squads are showing creative attacking, I, uh, I don't know that we'll end this in a draw. We'll find out as Ottawa TFC march their way towards the attacking third. Nice quick touches, and now it's controlled by Boyle. She picks a runner going into the box in Dubé. Flavi Dubé tries to beat two defenders, but Markham handle it well, and it's out for an Ottawa TFC throw-in. So a couple of options, not a ton of movement off the ball. The one that presented had it went over her head as Birch tracks onto it, Fee's shot from distance, lacking accuracy, and it's out for a Markham goal kick. It was Boyle who presented the dummy option from the throw. Not a bad little idea from Ottawa TFC, but in the end, never threatening goal with that attempt. As Markham played through their back line, Ava Beckett touches to the keeper, Tour, Sauvé Dean, over to Emma Warren, back to Dean. Very patient as Markham not trying to force, and Ottawa TFC seem content to allow Markham to hold the ball within their defensive penalty area. Now Dean carries it up, and under pressure, she's stripped of it. Crashing in here is a bit of contact and the Ottawa fans looking for a foul call. Dubé went to ground after stripping the ball away from Dean, but credit to Sauvé Dean as she tracked back and made a good defensive effort without giving up a penalty. Tenth minute of play and 
An Ottawa TFC throw inside their own half. They try work possession out across the line and it's controlled here by Fee. She burns up the far flank but runs out of room and that'll go for a Markham throw in. Leova. Ops to go backwards for Beckett. She plays a right footed ball up the pitch but it's headed by Curran on the Ottawa back line. Now controlled by Markham. Through the midfield, Alexander works to the near flank. Warren tracking onto it, but that one just out of touch. And it'll be an Ottawa throw in. They take it quickly, flicked on by Bonade. Tracking to it is Dubé, but she can't hold possession. Ottawa contain it though, and it's now through the middle of the field with space controlled by Francoeur. She finds Fee making the run. Far side, crosses the left footed ball in, headed on and that one over top the bar as Birch got on the receiving end of the cross from Fee but was unable to direct the header downward and it's out for a Markham goal kick. Danica Birch with that last chance there for Ottawa TFC and they continue to generate quality opportunities although they've yet to truly threaten the keeper tour. Warren, her long ball read by Galka and picked off. Galko switches to the far side for Fee. She's got room to control. She just played that great left footed cross in. This time it's dealt with defensively by Beckett and she looks to counter for Markham, her ball. Intended there for Mariani, but well out of her range, and Galco will track back to handle it for Ottawa TFC. Fee into the middle, Francoeur. Her attempt nearly picked off. They scramble to hold possession as Curran lays it off for Galco. Under pressure, she tries to clear it to the half, initially headed down, turned over as now it's Mariani in control for Markham. With a player on her back, she lays it off. Leova decides to go back to Beckett. Good touch to pick out Yakub. Dean, room to maneuver here for Markham. Warren, touch forward, but her pass off the mark, nearly intercepted. Good battle there as Gravina tried to get it back for Markham. And now a loose ball will be secured by Alexander. Her pass for Gravina. Ends up being read defensively by Ottawa. Dubé has it stripped off her foot. Nice sliding challenge there by Boyle and she connects that pass with Fee. Fee making the run, finds the overlap in Vermeer. Her left footed attempt, Beckett with a bit of a misclearance. Ottawa trying to take advantage of that as it's played towards the corner. Fee runs onto it, her low cross. Well done by the keeper, Gerline Tour who dove out and smothered that. Tor, drop kick, flicked on by Mariani, but no one there in white to hold possession. It pinballs off of Mariani's foot. And now Ottawa take it after the play by Curran. The two number fours going head to head, Alexander and Rachel Vermeer. As Markham try hold possession with the back line, Whalen decides to go all the way back to her keeper, Tor. Beckett, under pressure from Dubé. Dubé stripped it from Dean earlier, and now she starts to press the keeper, Tor. Dean receiving the pass, calm possession, collective possession here by Markham. As pulling it back is Yakub. Finds an option in the middle, making a run along the near flank is Gravina, but that ball well out of her range as it's played back to the Ottawa keeper, Paige Robert, and she gets the clearance out to half. Leova steps up, fights off the first would-be tackler, takes it to the touch line and does well to knock it off the Ottawa player, Birch, and out for a Markham throw. Markham working the near touch line and once again knocked out inside the attacking third. So Mariani will get a throw in here as the Markham captain tosses in. Kyoto tries to get it back to Mariani, does well. 
Defended closely by Fee. Right footed cross into the area. Curran checked that. It was actually Vermeer who missed the clearance. And then an offside called against Markham on the subsequent opportunity. So that'll put an end to that sequence and chance for Markham. Maya Galco set to take the free kick. Good left-footed connection on the ball over the head of Dubé. Beckett knocks it down. And now it's controlled by Rachel Vermeer. Her one-time touch trying to pick out Dubé making the run, but how about that effort from Dean to track over and get the clearance? Ottawa TFC throw deep in the attacking third. Dubé taking possession from the throw and plays it back, but in the offside position there, Rachel Vermeer, and it'll be a Markham free kick. And an opportunity for us to remind you that Ontario soccer values fair play, and we share this common passion with our partners from Respect in Sport, the leading e-learning e platform for the prevention of bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination. Learn more about their programs and start your Respect education journey today at respectgroupinc.com. Here's a potential counter for Markham, running on to a Chiu Solo, tries to pull back, finds an option there in Mariani. Her left foot draws over to the left flank now, is controlling it as Gravina. Markham really unable to fully capitalize on the counter as now Ottawa TFC have their defensive shape and well done by Ottawa TFC to strip possession away, pressuring Markham all the way back to the half line. Markham get it back as Dean plays the ball ahead and under pressure Whalen does well to hold it for her team. Stepping up, Galco gets the initial clearance. It's off the head of Leovis and out for an Ottawa throw in. Scoreless here in the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. It's our final match of six different games played here at the Fieldhouse over two days. And a great way to wrap up a tremendous weekend of action. Commemorating one heck of a person that left this earth far too early. And a nice way to commemorate Gary Miller and having his family on hand today for the pre-match celebration as well. Dean defensively doing a nice job there to get the clearance out through half and now a chance for Markham to work a counter. Mariani taking possession, looking for a runner, gets the switch, picking out Gravina but coming off her line and collecting strong hands there by Paige Robert. Good ball played ahead but unfortunately out of the range of Bonade and Dean tracks over to knock it out and it'll go for an Ottawa throw. Sauve Dean with Dubé all over her back. Dubé pressuring as Flavi Dubé nearly comes away with it but Yakub dances out of the first challenge, loses possession here. Nice dribbling by Boyle. Stripped off her foot and now controlled by Riley Bonade. She tries to switch it over to Fee. Wow, great vision to pick out Francoeur. Her initial pass blocked. She then tries the near side, but it'll be scooped up by the Markham keeper tour. And she'll bowl that one out for Leovas. Dean. Beckett, her ball up the pitch, running on to it is Chiusolo, but she's not going to get to that, and it's knocked out for a Markham throw-in. We'll get our, well, I thought we were going to get a substitution, we're actually going to get the match ball switched up here. As... 
Leovas tosses in, and now Beckett with a strong ball switch, and it's controlled by Gravina. She decides to take the defender on, and Devin Vermeer, Gravina takes her to the corner, and it's going to be a corner kick for Markham. So their first corner opportunity of this match, and we'll see if Markham can capitalize on a set piece opportunity. They've got two players tight to the corner right now. Yakub on the ball. And I believe that's Alexander showing the near option. But Yakub showing little interest as she sets up for the in-swinger. Good ball. Headed. Knocked around. Pinball. Well dealt with by Ottawa TFC defensively. As they get it out of their defensive third, quickly knocked back in, but controlled by the Ottawa keeper, Robert. Mariani getting the flick on there. And Markham hoping to threaten, but really never capitalized from that corner after the initial scramble. They try work something now, but that pass picked off by Fee, and she's got room to run with it up the far flank. Good touch ahead as a bit of a heavy first touch from Danica Birch, but she does well to pressure Beckett to the touch line and Beckett able to hold it in play. Francoeur, back to Vermeer. Nice job to thread a pass through for Dubé. She plays it over for Bonet. Riley Bonet trying to pull it to her left foot, opts to lay it off for Vermeer. Dubé, quick one-time touch and Ends up giving possession away, and now a chance for Markham to work it up through the midfield with their captain, Mariani. She feeds the ball ahead as Gravina runs onto it, but shielded nicely by the defensive effort of Devin Vermeer and collected by the Ottawa TFC keeper, Robert. As it's bowled out, and Galco plays her ball ahead. Dubé flicks it forward, but Beckett, tracking back defensively for Markham, gives possession away. Nice one, two, running on, but just offside is, I believe that's Bonet. Check it, it was actually Birch there for Ottawa TFC. As both Birch and Dubé trying to work a quick one, two, but with the Markham defender Beckett falling, it put du uh, Birch in the offside position. So we'll restart with the free kick inside the Markham penalty area. as Warren takes possession and plays it back for Dean. Dean over to Beckett, tracking forward. Yakub, Dean, lays it forward as Whalen plays back for Warren. Dean, we've seen a lot of this methodical possession from Markham in the match, no pressure to force. But here's a good ball played ahead and headed down by the Ottawa TFC midfielder as they tried to pick out Gravina. Controlled by Markham as Dean works her way across the half line, lays it off for Warren. Her left-footed ball off the mark. Nice job by Yakub to pick out an attacker. Mariani comes up with it, can't pull it for a clear shooting opportunity as it was Chia Solo who had it ricochet off of her leg. Mariani still holding possession for Markham. Plays it out wide as they look to cross back into the middle of the pitch and defensively cleared away by Ottawa TFC. Beckett steps up a strong shoulder in the back. Bit of a late whistle, but the right call there from the official. And it'll be an Ottawa TFC free kick and they look to try capitalize here quickly, but the referee will pull this back and slow things down. The in-stadium clock has been stuck on 20 for a little while now as we get our first substitution of the match. As Ottawa TFC making that change and bringing Julia Cochran, check that, it was actually Markham making the change, and Julia Cochran coming into the match. 
And now Cochran will have to try defend here, but nice job by Dubé to pick out Fee making the run. Tackle attempt, Fee fights through it, her cross, Dean misplays it, loose ball, volleyed, and it's in! Ottawa TFC strike first! I believe it was Devin Vermeer who got the goal as she darted a right leg volley attempt out. We'll get official confirmation there. Flavi Dubé also in the vicinity. It may have been Dubé. Number nine or number 10, we'll find out regardless. Ottawa TFC lead 1-0. As you're tuned into the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield, it's the girls under 17 final. And our opening goal coming moments ago, courtesy Ottawa TFC. Let's see how Markham respond. Mariani unable to hold possession. Still awaiting official confirmation, but it's got to be one of Dubé or Vermeer, both right there as that pass from Dubé intercepted. Nice job here. Stepping up for the interception is Rachel Vermeer as she plays a right-footed drive into the box, but it's knocked away by Dean and Warren able to get the clearance for the throw. There's a cross into the penalty area, headed on, but the keeper tour able to scoop that one up and we now get confirmation on the goal and it's Leah Francoeur who gets the goal for Ottawa TFC. So a big goal there by their attacking midfielder Francoeur as she did well to hold her position at the top of the penalty area when the ball eventually came to her she volleyed it from a distance and Tour could just watch helplessly. She tried to track back and make the save, but nothing she could do. Ottawa TFC getting set to make a substitution here in the 25th minute of play as coming into the match for the first time, Nora Gee. And they try pick her out from the throw. It's played by Bonade. Gee running over to it, but it'll be Warren who picks up possession for Markham. Her pass attempt knocked down and it's out for a Markham throw in. Warren back for Dean, ball hops over her foot, but with no pressure, she calmly makes the pass over to Beckett. Leova receiving the pass from Beckett has to go back as Dubé pressuring and now Ottawa with that strong push pressure once again nearly cause a turnover. Scramble for possession and now Ottawa do come away with it. Let's see what the team in red Ottawa TFC can do here. As Vermeer crosses in, Dean has it go off her foot. Tor comes off her line and does well to collect that before Danica Birch could get to it for Ottawa TFC. Leova, her right-footed ball picked off by Fee. She's been tremendous along that left flank for Ottawa TFC, but that time her pass a little too heavy, and it'll be controlled by the Markham keeper. Tor plays it out for Warren. Into the middle for Dean. Touches that one over to Beckett. Yakub. Dubé supplying the pressure on the back of Yakub, so she goes back to Beckett. Leova, nice job by Birch. Can't come away with it though. And now Ottawa TFC eventually scoop up possession as Galco plays it ahead. Birch, trying to pick out Guy, who's recently into the match. Now played ahead for Dubé into the penalty area. Dubé spinning off the pressure. Laying it backwards, there's an attempt from distance and Tour makes easy work of that attempt coming off the foot of Riley Bonade. The ball into the rafters, so we'll get a drop ball and that's all I'm gonna say. We'll 
Ooh, nearly troubling the keeper there. That would have been interesting had that got it what the referee would have decided there if that one would have counted. Because obviously it was a sign of good sportsmanship there by Ottawa TFC, but... Anyways, nice job by Tour to make the save. Controlled here by Markham as a bit of miscommunication and they turn possession over. Leova was moving up the pitch, the pass went behind her. And now it's out for an Ottawa TFC throw in. Fee, Dubé running onto it. That's last off a Markham player. So Beckett tries to keep it in, preventing the corner, but that's exactly what the outcome is. And now we'll get an Ottawa TFC corner kick. Ottawa TFC gonna make a substitution here before the corner. They're actually gonna bring two players into this match, including Wynn. Here comes the corner kick, setting up for the in-swinger. The other player coming into this match, Lortai. To the near post, headed on, and what a goal! Flavi Dubé! Brilliant execution, Ottawa TFC lead 2-0. A tremendous cross from the corner kick to the near post, Dubé getting a powerful header to it. And Ottawa TFC double their lead here in the 30th minute and now Markham will make a double substitution to try respond. Canada Soccer has launched its return to play campaign in collaboration with its member associations. The play campaign is a Canada-wide initiative which serves as a call to action for a safe and responsible return to play for all those involved in the sport of soccer from coast to coast to coast. To learn more, visit canadasoccer.com slash play. Well, what a goal from Flavi Dubé. And what an effort here so far from Ottawa TFC as Sauvé Dean drawing the oohs and ahs from the crowd after nutmegging the Ottawa player there. But I think Sauvé Dean would trade that nutmeg for a even scoreline as her team now trails 2-0. And we'll see how Markham respond. Once again, Ottawa putting all sorts of pressure up the pitch, making it hard for Markham to even get out of their own defensive half. And when they're not pressuring, this is exactly what they present. They present options that aren't threatening and they're content to allow the Markham back line to hold possession like we're seeing right now. As Beckett tries to change the momentum, she plays a good ball ahead, running onto it there was Mariani. They've shifted her now to the left flank, but unable to connect with it. And now it's all the way back to the Ottawa keeper, Robert Galco. Touched ahead, good vision to pick out Bonade. Boyle, working the near flank as Lortai tries to take on Warren. Lortai, her ball over to Dubé, touches on, there's an attempt, all power, little accuracy and it's out for a goal kick, but good effort by Nora Gee. And great work here by Ottawa TFC as they continue to press with under 15 minutes remaining in the opening half of action. As you're tuned in to the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield, it's our final match of the six matches this weekend, and it's the under 17 girls final with Ottawa TFC right now leading this match 2-0. Bit of confusion there with the match officials and Markham take advantage as they quickly play the ball in. And from the far flank where we get a Markham throw, now it's along the near touch line and it'll result in another Markham throw in. Dean touches over to Beckett. Oh, 
Oh, poor touch there, and it gives possession over to Flavie Dubé. She's already got one in this match for Ottawa. Dubé pulls over to the far side. The flag goes up, and it'll be an offside called there against Raylan Wynn. Peyton Wynn, excuse me. As Tour, the Markham keeper, plays it short for Dean. Whalen back to Beckett. Controlled now by Cochran. Knocked out, it'll be a Markham throwing around the half line. As the team in white try to get something going here. Both of these teams having strong showings in the 2021 OPDL campaign. Both of them finishing with identical 14 win, one draw, zero loss records. As that ball played ahead and running onto it is Warren, but coming off her line to collect the confident hands of Paige Robert, take possession back for Ottawa. But again, we noted it pre-kickoff and it may be starting to show itself a little bit here in this match, Ottawa TFC, despite these two teams having the identical records, Ottawa having the propensity to find the back of the net more often as they picked up 90 plus goal differential in those 15 games, just a spectacular effort and right now they lead 2-0 here in the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. 97 goals for to be exact in 15 games for Ottawa TFC. Just six goals conceded, a plus 91 goal differential. Markham, a plus 47 goal differential, 57 goals for, 10 against, but they find themselves trailing 2-0 here in the opening half of this match. And now Beckett being pressured. She has to play it back to her keeper tour. Ottawa TFC more than content to allow Markham to keep the ball within their own defensive half. Beckett tries to change that as she services one up the pitch, but easily read by Galco and stripped away. Taking that one was Cochran. She did well to fight through the close range knock and unfortunately for Markham, she couldn't hold possession. Now they do get it back as Holly Whalen does well to step over and try change the pace here. But her pass intended for Mariani, it's picked off. Dubé crosses one in, read well by Beckett as now her ball controlled by Curran. Dubé. Crossing out wide. Fee, room to run. Fee, carrying it in. Well defended, knocked out. That should be a corner. We await signal and the referee confirms a corner kick to come for Ottawa TFC. As they opt to play it short from the corner. Nice defensive work by Camdar there for Markham. Markham, get the clearance. Galco. Does well to draw back. Curran. Looking for a near side option. Picks one out in lower tie. Under pressure. Nice job there by Warren by for Markham. But that will roll out for an Ottawa throw in. Flicked on by Dubé. Unable to hold possession as Dean plays it up to the half. Battled by Koss. But she can't come away with it as the Ottawa back line hold on to it. Played ahead, nice work here by Guy. Dubé, good touch to pick out Lortai, making the run. Room to carry it in, Lortai crosses. No one there in red to get a foot to it. And that went off one of the rafters and we'll restart with the drop ball. So nice sportsmanship there as Ottawa TFC play it back to the Markham keeper. And Tor collects. Her drop kick avoids the rafters this time. Meets the head of Curran. 
Ottawa trying to wrestle possession back, but it's controlled by Markham. Chuasolo, her attempt, there's a shot from distance off the foot of Cochrane, but easy work for Paige Robert as she decides to bowl it out for Galco. Nothing doing yet for Ottawa TFC. Now they try pick out a runner. It's anticipated well by Warren and Markham take possession. Mariani, right-footed strike. She tried to test the keeper from long range, but that one out for a goal kick. From the goal kick, played short by Robert, and now her defensive back tries to play it across half, but it's controlled by Emma Warren for Markham. Dean, short touch to Warren. Her left-footed cross, trying to flick it on, but nothing doing there as Chia Solo was running onto it. And now it's controlled by Lortai. Guy a little flat-footed, but Lortai gets it back for Ottawa. This time, Guy checks towards the ball and earns the free kick in doing so. So 39th minute of action here as Ottawa TFC leading 2 to nothing over Markham here. In the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. Oh, a high boot there as Peyton Wynn tried to kick the ball but instead connected with the face of Ava Beckett. And wow, tough as nails. Beckett stepping right back up. She took the boot to the face and we'll see if maybe that can serve as some inspiration for Markham as one of their top players, Beckett, able to shake off a boot to the face. Again, no malicious intent by any means as Wynn was just trying to make a play on the ball. And Beckett ended up paying the price and now she's got to defend here against Dubé. Dean does well to track back against Dubé. Warren gets to the pass ahead of Guy and does well to knock it out as it goes for an Ottawa throw in. From the throw, whistled down by the official and possession turned over. And a chance for us to remind you that today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield action is fueled by Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel during halftime. Markham playing short as Sauve Dean in possession plays back to her goalkeeper, Tour. Beckett, Tour. As again, Ottawa TFC will allow Markham to do this all day long. Dean carrying the ball forward now, trying to change the pace. Does well to pick out Cochran. She's got room to make something happen, but her pass for Warren knocked out by Guy, and it'll be a Markham throw in. From the throw, Warren, Mariani. Under pressure, bit of a collision there, no whistle. Play continuing on as Cost does well to pick out Warren. Warren stepping past her player. Left foot in, cross delivered in. Oh, what a goal! How about that? Spectacular stuff from Markham. I believe it was Farah Yakub who got the header to it as Yakub has drawn Markham back within one late here in the first half. What a cross by Warren, and what a spectacular header there by Yakub. No chance for the keeper, Robert. We await official confirmation. Ottawa TFC try respond. Dubé into the penalty area. Draws to her right foot. Well defended by Beckett. She's playing like a warrior out there. Miss cleared. There's a volley. It's threatening. Wow, what a save. Tour elevating up. She hung in midair for a moment and somehow parried that one out. 
Chu Solo gets the goal for Markham. And a huge goal for Markham to draw back within one. Ottawa TFC nearly retained the two goal lead moments ago, if not for a spectacular save by Gerlin Tor. But excellent work by Markham as Warren and Chiosolo connect the cross with the header. And they score a goal in the 42nd minute to draw within one. And now a free kick coming here for Markham. Just outside the attacking third. Madison Mariani stands over top the ball. Jakub there as well. A minimum of two minutes to be added here in the first half. We're into the 44th minute. Jakub over top the ball for the Markham free kick. Tracking towards the far post. Confident goalkeeping that time as Robert comes out. A two-handed punch and it's out for a Markham throw-in. Nice redemption there by the Ottawa keeper after being beat moments ago. She had only been beaten six times in the OPDL season. But today, Ottawa concede. They still lead this match, however, 2-1. to one. And now they try to work something on the counter. Guy, that ball well out of her range. Warren tracking back to it. Now Guy turning on the Jets to provide some pressure. But Warren goes back to her keeper, Tor. Beckett. Good anticipation by Bonade. She nearly came away with it. Teams battling for possession, and after an exchange, Markham had it. Now it's controlled by Ottawa TFC. Dubé picking out the runner along the far flank, but unable to hold possession there. And now it's controlled by Fee. Burns past the first defender. Fee with an opportunity to cross. Nice defensive work by Beckett to pick it out of midair. But then her clearance knocked down by Peyton Wynn. Wynn gets around the first challenge. Taking on the second defender, her low cross picked off by Beckett and this time a stronger clearance. But Galco does well to step up and keep the pressure on. Fee, her shot to her, dives down to her left and does well not only to make the save but not to give up a rebound. Ottawa TFC unable to hold possession. It's out for a Markham throw in. So a good first half of action here. In the girls under 17 OPDL, Gary Miller Charity Shield. As Ottawa TFC try to take this 2-1 lead into the halftime break. Possession controlled by Ottawa TFC's Riley Bonade. Plays it out wide for Fee. Katie Fee working up that left sideline. Taking the defender on, gets around her. Tripped from behind. A caution to come here. And it'll be Aaliyah Kamdar going into the referee's notebook as Katie Fee continues to cause all sorts of headaches for the Markham back line working that left flank. So an Ottawa TFC free kick to come here as we're into the added time of the first half. Right now Fee, the lone player over top the ball for Ottawa, but a short option presenting in Jessica Boyle. Five Ottawa TFC players lining up to the near side of the penalty area just off the six yard box as they look to get a touch on an incoming cross from Fee. A three player wall sets up defensively. Fee on the free kick. Fee drills it into the wall. And the four-player wall for Markham does its job knocking it out for a corner kick. Fee gets set to take the corner for Ottawa. In-swinger. Oh, Tour gets a piece of it. Danger still present. Markham cleared to the top of the penalty area as Boyle under pressure, but the halftime whistle comes. And after the...
electrolytes to help replenish with lost in sweat, carbs to help fuel your working muscles, and fluids to help you hydrate. Scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Gatorade. It begins with a ball. Two teams, two nets, that ball, and a love of everything between the lines. But the game is more. The game is you giving every last breath to finish the sprint. The game is that last ounce of strength that pours out of you as you stretch to save your team. The game is questioning yourself over and over again until you find a way forward. Your personal best today is your challenge for tomorrow. Giving everything now is only knowing how much further you can go. The laces we tighten are the ones that bind us together. Entering the huddle as a player and leaving as a team. Play because you love it. Inspire because it's in you. Unite because it's in us. Ontario Soccer. Once I joined the OPDL, my development just went up. Last year I made the Ontario team, so that was super exciting. It's helped me reach my goal of getting to Toronto C. The OPDL has gave me the experience and like the exposure to get into the provincial projects. I mean, without the intense training that I have with my coaching at Oakville, along with Ontario Soccer, I don't think I'd be where I am today. The Ontario Player Development League is the standard-based program administrated by Ontario Soccer. It offers the uh, standards in training, competition for athletes between the age of 13 and 17. It puts the best players against the best players in the province every single weekend. Makes you train with the best players around your area, which can only help you develop. The competition in the league is very high, so it gives that challenge for all the players in the league. Coaching is crucial for OPDL. It's the main objective, one of the main objectives for, for, for us in the program. We want coaches to be challenged on a regular basis within the OPDL, not only from a, um, an opposition standpoint, but also from a personal growth and professional development. The coaches have a particular uh, certificate certification. Uh, they're able to bring certain things to the, uh, to the kids that maybe others don't. As well, we have a set curriculum. The focus is more on our development and not just like on games and stuff. So the coaches are really focusing on us and how we develop, which really helps us get better and better. We believe that the same way we, we approach our players, we need to approach our match officials and we need to provide them with platforms to, uh, to be assessed, to be mentored, to be coached and uh, move to the next level. The OPDL is beneficial for both players and match officials because it raises the standard of the game. We're mentored, we're coached, so that we can increase um, our knowledge and our consistency of the match. Unlike any other program in this province, OPDL focuses on individual performance plan and the ability for players uh, to move on to the next level. A lot of the time we're always training, we're working hard as a team to get there and individually like as a player, it's helped me a lot with my development. It's good because it trains me and it also like not just teaches me about soccer but also teaches me how to be a better person through like my team and my coach and just the environment I'm around. Being in the OPDL for athletes it's about being in the right environment. As a parent, you always want your child to be in the correct environment for their development. And in soccer, in Ontario, there's no better opportunity, no better place than OPDL. The OPDL is a pathway for players to be able to excel in a standard-based league. It's player-centered and we feel that this is the best approach to help develop players to, for opportunities at the next level. Playing in the OPDL league has helped me into the, like shaped me into the player I am today because of how high, like how high the intensity is during everything. So every game, every practice, you have to bring 100% to everything that you do, which really helps for uh, going to university because you want to get a starting position. You want to start on the field, play the whole game, so no matter what you do, bring 100%. The opportunities for OPDL athletes can vary. When they move forward from the OPDL, there are many opportunities such as our provincial program in League One Ontario, where our best athletes can graduate to, or national team programs. You have professional soccer, such as like the Toronto FC and their academy program, the new Canadian Premier League, 
And for the student athlete, there's also Canadian College, U Sports in Canada, and NCAA opportunities in the US. Charity Shield, like that's a really big thing. The bus teams come together and it gets broadcasted. So that was like a really big part because all the universities that were interested in me watched it and I got lots of offers after that. The OPDL is preparing me by putting me on a pathway to building me up to the provincial team, pushing me towards Toronto FC and potentially the national team. OPDL players become exposed to university opportunities through several programs. We have OPDL on campus. Uh, players can also be scouted through the OPDL scouting weekends. Provincial teams is a great opportunity as well through the projects and competition versus Quebec. University coaches will come and scout the players at these events, as well as national staff and pro academies. So there's lots of opportunities for OPDL players to be uh, scouted at the uh, at the collegiate level. I just think the OPDL has great exposure um, because the quality is so high of the coaches and players. It always entices like university coaches to come out and watch us or national team coaches to come out and watch us. And so I just believe the OPDL has provided the environment for coaches to want to come watch us. Female athletes have a lot of great options playing in the OPDL. It's the segue for them to move forward into a national youth teams program. And they would first do that by starting off by trying to make it within the provincial teams program. If they're successful that way, players will be brought into the Ontario Super Centre in, in Markham, where they'll train on a full-time basis and then be known as being our national youth team players from this province that possibly could play into a national excel environment. Male players in the OPDL have similar options as the female. The process usually starts from an OPDL moving to a provincial environment to possibly be scouted by the likes of a TFC Academy at the pro environment or the national teams youth team program. There are opportunities for these athletes. I'm looking forward to becoming a pro and joining TFC is a uh, step towards going to that. It tries to put you in a more professional environment. Like the competition level is really what pushed me to be who I am now. I believe the OPDL has given me like a good opportunity to play among the best players, be exposed to the best coaches and have just a great training environment. And I just think in comparison to other leagues, the OPDL has just been providing me with the best environment to be able to get me where I am today. Alright fans, let's get you back to the Ontario Soccer Center Fieldhouse for the second half of action here at the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield with Ottawa TFC leading 2-1 over Markham as we get set for the second half kickoff. Flavi Dubé kicks us off and we're underway here with Ottawa TFC working right to left across your screens. Thank you to Ontario soccer partner Soccer Express for their first class support. As Canada's premier soccer apparel and equipment dealer, Soccer Express has everything needed to take your net, your game to the next level. Visit SoccerX.com to check out the latest gear from Adidas, Nike, Puma, Admiral, and more. Here comes Ottawa TFC threatening. Flavi Dubé lays it off. One time shot, and they score! What a strike! Rachel Vermeer seconds into the second half of action. Just 45 seconds into play. And Ottawa TFC lead 3-1. to one. Oh, Tremendous stuff there by Ottawa TFC as they build an attack seemingly out of nothing. And they find Vermeer running onto the ball. As right from the kickoff, Markham trying to test the keeper, Robert, but that one never getting close to goal, and it's out for a Ottawa TFC goal kick. As the keeper, Paige Robert, opts to play it short. Vermeer, who just got that goal for Ottawa TFC, playing it forward. Now it's picked off by Markham, controlled here by Chiosolo. Tiosolo works her way towards the touchline, pulls back in, left-footed cross, cleared away by Curran, and now controlled as Birch 
takes possession for Ottawa. TFC, good ball ahead, defended nicely there by Beckett, and with no option, she knocks it out for a throw in. Player down for Markham, and that's Sauve Dean. So hopefully nothing serious for Dean. She has been an anchor on that back line. And good to see her able to jog off under her own power. So for the time being, Sauve Dean out of this match for Markham. As we await to see the replacement. And we'll restart the action with a throw in for Ottawa TFC. Leovas coming into the match as the substitute for Dean. Cochran under pressure, she's tripped up and the referee right there to make the call and it'll be a free kick for Markham. Beckett who took the boot to the chops in the first half but didn't even step off the pitch Plays the free kick forward, and now Koss tries to take it for the team in white. As Whalen playing it back for Beckett. Touched over to Leovis. As she goes over to Warren. Warren played that beautiful cross in at the end of the first half, which was finished off. By Markham late in the first half as that cross towards the face of goal, out for a goal kick. It was Chiasolo who got the goal for Markham on the header off the boot of Warren and Warren has provided a good defensive presence in that left back position on the Markham back line. As Beckett playing it with her keeper Tor. As we're into the 50th minute of action here, Ottawa TFC increasing their lead in the opening minute of this second half to make it a 3-1 scoreline. Leovis back to her keeper, Tour. Tour playing it out, closing down is Win. Peyton Wynn can't quite get to it and Markham hold possession. Again, Ottawa TFC will allow Markham to hold the ball in their defensive third all day long. This is not threatening at all to Ottawa. And if the loan service comes from these long balls by Beckett, it's relatively predictable and easy for Ottawa to contain defensively. And in that sequence, they do so, winning themselves a throw-in. Now controlled by Boyle. Tries to find Vermeer. Dubé tracking back, she can't hold it. Nice job by Vermeer to win that 50-50. And now it's controlled by Dubé. Across half, Dubé trying to thread the needle with that pass, but Leovis stepping up for the interception. Mariani, that's stripped away from her, out for a Markham throw-in. Good battle through the air as Cochran stepping up for Markham, but her numerical counterpart, Francoeur, who got the second goal of this match for Ottawa TFC, does well to take that challenge away. Warren making the pass, Cochran dribbling and pulls it back for Warren with no options in front of her. Warren tries to play it over to Julia Cochran. She does well to fight through that challenge. But once again, Ottawa TFC very content to allow Markham to hold this kind of non-threatening possession. As Markham play it back to Leovis. Beckett. Near flank as Kamdar touches forward. Chiosolo couldn't hold possession and now it's back with the Markham center back, Beckett. She goes all the way back to her goalkeeper, Tour, who plays it back out for Beckett. The two exchange possession. Once again received by Beckett. Nice pressure here, Francoeur comes away with it. Plays into the middle, intended for win, but she couldn't hold possession, and Mariani's flick on, intercepted. Controlled by Ottawa TFC now, as Birch working the flank. She can't win the initial challenge, does well to fight through the tackle. And here it is with Dubé. Lunging into that attempt, but defensively, Leovis was there, and Flavi Dubé's 
kind of diving shot attempt was blocked. Markham cleared out across half, but Ottawa TFC calmly control it as Curran takes possession. Fee, she has been very strong here in this match for Ottawa. She plays the ball towards the penalty area. Miss hit, shot from distance off the post. Great opportunity there, and then it goes off of Birch, out for a goal kick, but a tremendous strike coming from Rachel Vermeer, who nearly had her second of the match, this time denied by the post. Played short from the goal kick as Tour lays it to Beckett, back to the keeper Tour, and now with Leovis. Ottawa TFC kind of shifting more to a 4-3-3, maybe trying to press more, but here they might be caught on the counter. Nice job by Chiasolo to switch it over to Koss. She tries to step over. Mirani, her, Mariani, her pass then off the mark for Koss, and it'll be controlled at least for a moment by Ottawa TFC. The foot swept out there from Galco. No foul called against Koss as she tries to tee up a left-footed strike but Curran gets the block. Nice hustle there by Vermeer to step up, and now a chance, no, it's whistled back on the foul, otherwise it could have been a counter for Dubé for Ottawa TFC. So instead we'll restart here with a Markham free kick as Emma Koss overtop the ball. She has got power this is from way out. I can't imagine she's gonna threaten target from this distance, but let's see what Koss does. A two player wall sets up defensively. Koss, right foot into the ball. It's right on target, but held confidently by the Ottawa keeper, Paige Robert. Geez, that free kick coming from quite a distance is there. Koss puts the right foot into it again. And that one's sailing high over top the net. The free kick was, geez, almost 40 yards out. I mean, that was a real distance. And nice job by Koss to even hit the target from that far out. Here go Ottawa TFC on the counter. Boyle leading the rush. Makes the pass ahead for Fee. Along the near flank, tries to cut in. Fee, her right-footed cross. Dubé tried to flick it out of midair. Loose ball played ahead as Chiusolo takes it here for Markham. She's got room to run after stepping over it. Does well to hold the sideline, it stays in play. Nice job there by Chiusolo. Galco takes possession away. Kamdar now controlled as holding along the flank was Fee. And out for an Ottawa throw in. Approaching the 60th minute of action as the ball played out wide. We're actually into the 60th minute, I believe, as there's a cross trying to pick out Chiusolo who picks it out of midair. No one running onto it there for Markham and into the hands of the Ottawa keeper, Robert. Her drop kick. Met by Warren for Markham. And then cleared up the pitch, running back defensively is Leovis. She's got Dubé on her and it's cleared out for the Ottawa throw-in. That scoreboard gets me every time. I think it's a nine, it's a five. We're into the 57th minute of action now as Galco tracking back, so I'll save the sponsor read for another minute or two. As nice work here by Ottawa TFC to march across the half line and Fee carrying the ball up the near flank. She has been a threat all game long and that time her cross knocked out for a corner kick. And again, Katie Fee creating opportunities for Ottawa TFC. Short option from the corner in Danica Birch, but now she starts to walk away. 
Fee setting up for the in-swinger. Tour, she has to parry that one straight up over her head, almost volleyball-like, volleying it, and fortunate that stayed out of her net. Ottawa TFC holding possession in the attacking half as Dubé's attempt knocked down, and then a bit of a clumsy exchange as Jakub comes away with the ball without committing the foul. Francoeur already with one in this match. Now she pulls it back for Boyle. Fee, nice job by Birch, nice one, two. Fee getting on the receiving end of it, steps around her player before Beckett clears it out for an Ottawa throw in. Fee, Boyle, Galco, she's thinking shot, it's blocked by Beckett. Loose ball picked up by Vermeer, offside. The flag going up right away as Dubé in the offside position and a free kick will come here for Markham in the 59th minute. I will take this opportunity to remind you that Sports Engine is the official technology partner of Ontario Soccer and the leading provider of sport relationship management software for youth and amateur sports. Check out sportsengine.com backslash solutions to see how they can heat, how they can help keep your club running in stride on and off the pitch this season. Mariani, good ball, picks out. Cost making the run. Check that, that's Chiu Solo. She's got room to bring it into the penalty area. Chiu Solo, big save by Robert. Paige Chiasolo was sent on the run after picking up the ball just across the half line. Took it all the way into the penalty area but was denied by the keeper. Koss, left footed strike, big diving save and Paige Robert with what may have been her best save of the match right there. The Ottawa TFC keeper with the drop kick. It's out to half where Markham who are showing signs of energy and new life right now, take possession. Trailing by two. Let's see if Markham show a new level of urgency here in the latter stages of this match. As Jakub, her ball picked off. Francoeur, nice job to pick out Fee. One touch, ball played ahead for Birch, but out of her range. Controlled by Beckett. Birch closes down Beckett. Beckett gives it away. Touch back now as Boyle, with two players on her back, lays it off for Fee. Right-footed cross towards the far post, but the Markham goalkeeper, Gerline Tour there with steady hands. Her drop kick met by the head of Galco for the Ottawa back line. The ball pin balls back to the Markham Back four and now controlled by the goalkeeper Tour. Playing it out for Leovis. Under pressure, Jakub turns back into the middle and opens up some space. Jakub tries to pick out Mariani with that long ball, but the service off the mark and now Ottawa in possession. Dubé with a player draped on her back, fights off the challenge, feeds it ahead. Strong tackle there and knocking it away is Beckett, and Beckett earns a goal kick somehow. Wow, tremendous defensive work there by Ava Beckett for Markham. Ottawa TFC in disbelief as Dubé thought her team had won a corner kick. Peyton Wynn, the player, who was tackled by Beckett. And Beckett did well to knock it off of Wynn out for the goal kick. Well, we saw the boot to the face of Beckett provide inspiration for Markham in the first half as minutes after Beckett took the boot to the head, they were able to score their first of the match at the time, making it 2-1. Let's see if Markham can find an equally sound response here after Beckett coming up with another big play on the Markham back line. Warren, her ball picked off. 
cleared only as far as Cochran, and now Ottawa take possession back. Switching to the near side as Fee takes it. Closed down by Mariani. Fee playing ahead for Birch. Missed touch. That should be out for a throw in, and now it's whistled for the Markham toss. Mariani receives it as they take it quickly. Her ball, no one there in white. It'll be controlled by Curran for Ottawa TFC. She plays it back. Chiosolo starting to close down. Bit of a push on the back of Camdar. Play continuing on as it's off of Mariani and out for an Ottawa throw in. From the Ottawa TFC throw as they start to slow things down a little bit here. We're inside the final 30 minutes of this match. And the ball played up ahead for Flavie Dubé. Dubé picking out the runner in Vermeer. She's got the goal here in the second half and there's a nice one too. Vermeer running onto it, tackled. It's gonna be a penalty kick. No doubt about that one. The referee in prime position to make the call as Rachel Vermeer was taken down from behind in the box. And it'll be a penalty kick here for Ottawa TFC in the 64th minute. The Markham coaching staff not at all happy about this call, but I don't think there will be too much question when they look back on the video. Pretty clear cut penalty kick as Flavie Dubé stands over top the ball. Dubé, right footed strike, it's saved! Tour with a huge stop, pairing it up into the bar. And now Markham clear it out. Bookmark that if Markham can come back in this match. As Dubé with a chance to put Ottawa TFC up 4-1 to one from the penalty spot in the 64th minute. And she is denied by the combo effort of the keeper Tour and the woodwork as it went off the crossbar after the parry save by Tour. Ottawa trying to press again, service into the box for Dubé, but she couldn't get a foot to the reception. And now it's off of Wynn out for a goal kick. Markham have a few reserves getting up and warm, including Sauve Dean, who we saw leave the match earlier with an injury. So we'll see if Markham opt to make any changes here. For the time being, they play the goal kick short. As Tour looks for an option up the pitch. Koss with a push on the back of the Ottawa player, and that's going to be a free kick for the team in red. As Kern plays it quick and short, Fee taking it. Right footed attempt blocked by Beckett. She's going to have some bruises after this one. She's really put her body on the line. And some nice anticipation there by Camdar. She comes away with it. Good ball ahead for Chiosolo. Right now she's the lone Markham attacker up in the third. Chiosolo tries to draw back to her left foot. Looking for support. Has someone in Mariani and that attempt curls over top the bar. She had time and space but instead opted for the one touch strike. Maybe should have slowed it down for a better effort but Regardless, she didn't miss that by much anyway. And Markham starting to put a little more promising attack together here. 66th minute of action. Nice job by Cochran to step up and intercept the goal kick. Galco parries it away. Nearly turned over as it pinballs around. Whalen couldn't come up with it. Now Yakub takes it. She opts to play it intended for Mariani, but well out of her range and out for an Ottawa throw in. Long throw from Ottawa TFC, but it'll go to Leovis for Markham. Warren under pressure. Off of Warren, out for an Ottawa throw in. Approaching the final 20 minutes of match play. Excellent sliding challenge there from Ava Beckett. She has been superb on that back line for Markham. 
But Ottawa trying to hold the ball inside the attacking half, and they do so here with Galco. Fee, one touch intended for Birch. Can she hold it in play? Yes, she does. Draws to her right foot, the cross towards the penalty area. Vermeer running onto it, and that volley, all power, but not the accuracy needed to test the keeper. So a goal kick to come here for Markham in the 68th minute. They trail 3-1. to one. You're tuned in to the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. It's the girls under 17 final, and it's our final match of six here on the weekend. A tremendous celebration of life and soccer here at the Ontario Soccer Centre Fieldhouse Stadium. Ottawa TFC play it short from the free kick. Dubé thought about turning up, but instead pulls it back. Francoeur, Boyle. Ottawa TFC slowing it down, ensuring quality possession here as they try play ahead for win. She's all over the back of Leovis, and Leovis does well to prevent it from going out for a corner. Dubé flicks on from the header. Bouncing ball, Vermeer tries the volley again, but a bit of a backspin on the bounce, and it looked like Wynn might come up with it, but instead she commits a foul, and a free kick now for Markham. Emma Warren gets set to take the free kick. Tries to clear it up through half, but stepping up defensively was Devin Vermeer. Fee. Room to carry it forward, and she takes the space. Lays it off for Birch. Birch to her right foot, tries to draw it, but stepping off it was Francoeur, and a little bit of miscommunication leads to possession being turned over. As Mariani takes it. Chiosolo, nice tackle there by Galco, and Ottawa come away with possession. Curran, her long ball. Birch picks it out of midair. Good challenge by Wynn, as a little too aggressive in the eyes of the official, and it's a foul called against Ottawa TFC. And a chance for us to remind you that today's OPDL Charity Shield action is fueled by Gatorade, the official sports fuel of the OPDL. Rehydrate, replenish, and refuel after the match. Great ball ahead, Birch running onto it, tried to shoulder it to herself, but closed down by two Markham defenders. And ultimately, it was Leovis who knocked it out for the throw-in. So 20 minutes plus any additional time remaining here for Markham to try change this outcome and this result as the scoreline 3-1 to one right now in favor of Ottawa TFC. And that ball out for a Markham goal kick. And we'll get in Ottawa TFC substitution here. Markham will make a true uh, double substitution here. As well. So for Ottawa, Riley Bonade coming back into the match. For Markham, two players coming in and certainly Dean, one of them, didn't quite catch the other player but I'm sure we'll spot her soon enough. As from the goal kick, Beckett takes possession here for Markham. Her ball for Chiusolo as she steps and tries to change the direction of play, has to go backwards to do so, and now it's controlled by Beckett. Beckett switching out, intended for Warren, well read by Ottawa, and it's knocked to the Markham keeper. Tour, her drop kick 
across half, but it's met by the foot of Francoeur. Ottawa trying to counter as Birch running onto it. Danica Birch, nice tackle there by Beckett, getting just enough of the ball to slow Birch up as Ottawa have to play it back into the middle. Now they touch it wide for Fee. Katie Fee taking on the defender in Leovis. Leovis can't stay with her. Fee, her low cross, intercepted by Beckett and cleared out up to the half for Chiasolo. Excuse me, that's Mariani who takes possession. Now Chiasolo has it. Her ball off an Ottawa player, ricocheting off the back of Boyle and now controlled by Galco. Galco picks out Fee as her ball will end up being picked off by Dean. Dean does well to hold possession there. Dubé and Birch closing Savoy Dean down. But she's able to hold possession for Markham. Beckett. Waylon to Beckett, who in turn plays it to Yakub. Under pressure. Dean. She's closed down. Nice job by Birch. Dubé in possession. Tries to play it back to Birch. I think she would have been flagged for the offside. But with Markham in possession, play continuing on. Warren tried to dummy and take it, but couldn't quite get it. And now we get an Ottawa substitution here in the 74th minute. Both of these teams undefeated in the OPDL season. 14 wins, one draw, zero losses, identical records for these squads. However, as we highlighted, Ottawa with a plus 91 goal differential in those 15 matches. And today they have been the better of the two squads on the pitch for the most part, which is why they lead. 3-1 to one here inside the final 20 minutes of match play. As you're tuned in to the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield, and it's the under-17 girls final. Markham trying to pull another one back here, get back within one. Chia Solo, her shot to the near post. And it's scooped up by the Ottawa keeper, Robert. Paige Robert, good vision up the field as she picks out Guy with the drop kick. Guy with room to run, and she plays a serviceable ball ahead for Dubé. Dubé back for Guy, tries to flick on as it's set up for the left-footed strike outside the penalty area off the foot of Francoeur. And in the end, easy work for the Markham goalkeeper, Tour. Ball pinballs around as it initially went from a strong header from Boyle off of Alexander and now back to Ottawa as Dubé plays it. And it's controlled by Rachel Vermeer. Dubé, right-footed cross, top of the penalty area, flicked on with the one-time attempt off the foot of Bonade. But solid hands from Tour, plucking that out of midair. Mariani tries to flick on. Curran may have gotten away with a bit of a handball. Play continuing on as Bonade Tries to set up a 1-2, but Markham able to sniff that out, and now they hold possession. Waylon. Yakub. She's got Warren making the run up the far flank, but that ball well out of range and dealt with defensively by Vermeer for Ottawa. And Ottawa TFC will take this opportunity to make a substitution as Flavi Dubé comes out of this match. A tremendous impact for Dubé, and even though she was stopped from the penalty spot here in the second half, she had a very positive impact for Ottawa TFC in this game. Loose ball controlled now by Ottawa TFC as it's played ahead for Bonade. Making the run into the match as uh, unable to catch it was Lortai. They have moved Rachel Vermeer into the attacking position where Dubé had been taking up residence and pull Lortai back to 
where Vermeer had been playing. Lortai takes the throw, tosses in for Boyle. Touch into the middle as Francoeur tries to pick out the player along the flank in Vermeer. But Sauvé Dean there defensively for Markham and she knocks it out for the throw in. Ottawa TFC holding possession from the throw, working away to the top of the penalty area, but unable to generate a clean shooting opportunity was Riley Bonade. As Galco knocks it high in the air, Fee takes it down, and now Markham with possession. Nice job there by Alexander. Her pass intercepted by Fee. The ball given away by Fee, controlled by Whalen. Whalen stepping up into space. Lunging tackle by Galco, and she got just enough to break up the momentum. Mariani plays it to the near post, and the keeper, Page, there for the save with relative ease in goal for Ottawa. Beckett, her right-footed ball played forward, miscommunication with the Markham front line, and they give possession away. Nice step up by Beckett, she reads it well. Markham come away with possession as Jakub looking for an option. She's closed down from behind, nearly stripped of the ball, but Jakub lays it off now for Warren. Warren trying to work the far flank. All over Lortai, Warren does well to get around her. Warren's cross then unable to connect with any player in a white kit and it'll be controlled out towards the half by Ottawa TFC. Now knocked to the touchline. Held in as Dean takes possession. 79th minute of action. Sauvé Dean into the middle as it's controlled by Holly Whalen. Back to Dean. Beckett. Beckett playing a good ball forward, but no one there in white, and it'll be into the hands of the Ottawa keeper, Robert. From the drop kick, it bounces all the way to Beckett. She holds possession, tries to play it ahead for Mariani, but it's swept away by Fee. Fee. Her ball running onto it from a distance is Guy coming off her line to collect his tour. As Nora Guy started to turn the Jets on and nearly created a hectic moment for the Markham back line. into the 80th minute of play. As it's controlled here by Dean. Yakub picks out Warren, making the run, working the far touch line. Good defensive close there as Devin Vermeer comes over to make the stop. Once again, knocked out. It'll be a Markham throw in. Mariani tries to hold it. Koss crashing in. Mariani comes up with it. Lays it off for Whalen. Closed down by Guy. Whalen touches out wide for Warren. Nice job by Warren. Drawing for a cross. Left footed effort. Knocked down. Warren crashing into it again. Loose ball. What an effort by Warren. Crosses in. What a save. Robert gets just enough after Koss got a volley to it. Brilliant individual effort by Emma Warren. All of that only to be stifled by the fingertips of the keeper, Paige Robert. But excellent work by Warren and cost for Markham. Ottawa TFC making a substitution. They will pull Rachel Vermeer out of this match and bring in Peyton Wynn. It'll be a Markham throw in deep in the attacking third. Bit of confusion here as Markham will try to get a substitution in. 82nd minute of play. Aliyah Kamdar looks to be the player coming back into the match. Warren, I think, took a bit of a knock on that sequence and now she'll have to come out of the match, but Markham can't quite get their 
stuff together yet, and now it looks like it'll be Gravina coming into the match. The Mar Markham coaching staff having a heck of a time trying to figure this out here. So all of that only to have Warren stay in the match. So no substitution. And Emma Warren getting some water and some words of encouragement will soldier on here. 83rd minute of play, Warren. Throwing deep into the attacking third. Almost a corner kick type scenario as Warren plays it to Chiosolo. Her cross. A single bounce before Guy gets to it for Ottawa TFC. And her strong clearance will track back inside the Markham half. Beckett laying it off. Possession given away. Guy plays it back for Galco. Galco's pass nearly picked off. Nice job by Boyle to ensure it wasn't. Boyle almost gave it away as she was being closed down. Now Warren takes it for Markham. Pressure on her back, nothing doing. As fighting through that challenge is win and she takes the ball for Ottawa, only to be met by a strong shoulder challenge by Dean. And now Markham try to counter. Curran, she clears it away. Dean gets clipped unintentionally by Wynn, but a free kick to come here for Markham. And a chance to remind you that soon another deserving team will engrave their name into OPDL history and hoist the beautiful Gary Miller Charity Shield Trophy, tastefully updated by Nothers, the award store. For more than 50 years, Nothers, the award store, has been a leading supplier of awards and recognition products across Ontario, offering complete assistance from program concept planning all the way to product delivery. See how they can help your organization at Nothers.com. Mariani heads that one on. It's promptly knocked down, and Ottawa TFC play it ahead for Guy. Guy playing towards the penalty area, but Dean tracking over and clears it out for the throw-in. Final five minutes of action plus any added time, and with a couple of stoppages here in the second half, I think you can anticipate a few minutes being added on. However, right now it's Ottawa TFC comfortably in front, leading 3-1. to one in the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. Markham trying to change the score line here as Koss, her attempt knocked down and blocked. Controlled by Ottawa TFC's Francoeur, stepping over it. Smart pass to pick out Vermeer. Wynn couldn't quite curve her run and she's called offside. So Tour will take the free kick here for Markham, who again, not quite showing signs of urgency needed, trailing by two late in this match. Maybe they know that the outcome inevitable at this point. They've put a great effort forward today, but going up against this powerhouse Ottawa TFC squad, maybe it just wasn't meant to be today. Markham will Try for some last ditch heroics here as they play the ball over to Dean. Sauve Dean opens up a lane and plays it out wide for Warren. Warren tries to take on her numerical counterpart in Lortai, but it's Lortai who comes away with it. Good shoulder to shoulder battle there, and now it's Dean stepping up to hold it for Markham. The ball intended forward for Mariani, but it's blocked after Alexander put her foot through it. Free kick coming here for Markham. Beckett will hurry the troops up the pitch and she'll try to take control here. Maybe looking for a quick strike opportunity from the free kick. Beckett will leave it for Raquel Alexander. And Ava Beckett will take a position around the penalty marker to try get something on the receiving end of this cross. Left-footed cross into the penalty area. Headed away by Galco. Volleyed on 
by Boyle and the Markham keeper almost to the half line tour plays it back up the pitch headed down Yakub volleyed out of midair Galco mistimes that approach Mariani comes away with it taking on fee Mariani dribbles through two challenges before laying it off for Dean Dean's pass picked off when taking it she tried to play a serviceable ball ahead for Bonade, but well out of her range. And now Tour with the one touch up the pitch. Mariani running onto it. She's onside. And nice job by the Ottawa center back Vermeer to track over and clear the danger. As now Fee takes control. 88th minute of action. Stretching out to make the play is Alexander, but she can't hold possession. As now it's played up the line. And Guy able to take it here for Ottawa TFC. Right-footed cross, rolling, and that will go out for a goal kick. Ottawa TFC will make a substitution here as we're approaching the 89th minute of action and awaiting how much added time we will have here in the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. Riley Bonade will be substituted out of the game. And I believe that is Flavi Dubé coming back into the match. Indeed, it is Dubé, and she'll take up her center forward position. It's headed forward for Dubé, who tracks back to take possession. Steps around the first challenge, and it's out for an Ottawa TFC throw-in. Fee plays it short for Dubé. She ends up giving it away to Beckett. Closed down as Guy nearly retained possession. Nice job by Yakub as she spins off the challenge, playing the ball up the line, but it goes out for an Ottawa TFC throw in. Final minute of play. We're into the 90th minute and Ottawa TFC with a two goal lead here in the girls under 17, 2021 OPDL, Gary Miller Charity Shield. As Ottawa looking to close it out. And Guy carrying the ball forward, makes the pass to the far flank. Win, running onto it, taking Dean into the penalty area. Good defensive work there by Sove Dean as she strips the ball away. Not committing a foul in the process. Nice work by Francoeur. Ottawa holding possession. Ball played forward. Guy, quick touch over to Dubé. Win making the run. She's offside right now. Dubé recognizing that. Looks for another option. Tried to pick one out in Lortai. Still heads it back in her direction. Now Lortai crosses to the top of the 18. A Markham player down right now is that Attempt from distance, an easy save for Tour, and now the referee will blow it with the Markham player injured. Well, as we await treatment on the injured player, we'll take this opportunity to remind you that the OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield is all about competing well on the pitch while doing good in the community, supporting the team's fundraising efforts, and get your shot at winning the jackpot this weekend by buying a ticket to our special Gary Miller Charity Shield 50-50 raffle at www.rafflebox.ca slash raffle slash Ontario soccer. Ticket sales close at 11.59 p.m. tonight and the draw will be held tomorrow, November 8th. The winner will be notified shortly thereafter. Once again, head over to www.rafflebox.ca slash raffle slash Ontario soccer and get your 50-50 raffle tickets for the special Gary Miller Charity Shield 50-50 raffle today. Folks, thanks for your support.
of a hushed silence falling over the Ontario Soccer Centre Stadium field houses. The injured Markham player needing to be helped off the pitch, carried off the pitch. So a concerning sight there for Markham and we hope the injury, nothing serious for the player. And we can't quite make out who the injured player is, but we pass on our well wishes and hope for the best for the injured Markham player. Looks like the League One Ontario men's final happening now outside as well. Big day for soccer action here at the Ontario Soccer Centre Stadium, both inside and outside the field houses. We're broadcasting live inside the field house for the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. And it's our final match of six on the weekend as we get set to restart the action here. We've yet to get the announcement for added time, but the 90 minutes has passed and we are in to added time now. With Ottawa TFC leading three to one. As the ball controlled here by Vermeer. Check that, that was Boyle. Played into the middle for Francoeur. Francoeur trying to pick out Wynn making the run. She's onside. Peyton Wynn, one time attempt and a strong save there by Tour. Tour, good drop kick, but it's picked off by Boyle. Dean getting it back for Markham. Controlled here is that crossing effort from Lortai, volleyed by Guy, and it's out for the goal kick. Check that, it actually ricocheted out for a corner. So Ottawa TFC getting a corner kick late here. And patiently taking their time as they get this one going. Fee. They opt to play to the straight in from the cross. There's a volley effort in that one. High over top the net, out for a goal kick. Goal kick taken quickly, Beckett and Tor going back and forth. Referee will have them retake it. So once again, they play it short. Beckett. Dubé closing down, providing pressure. Beckett with a player on her back and Guy, Guy had it, but ends up giving it back to Beckett. Nice work there by Boyle, but they can't hold it in play. And it's out for a Markham throw in. The final whistle goes and that's it. Ottawa TFC are your girls under 17, 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield Champions. Congratulations, ladies. One heck of a season and one heck of an effort here tonight. And Ottawa TFC are victorious with a final score of three to one. Folks, stay tuned. We're not going anywhere. We've got a special trophy presentation coming up at the conclusion of this match. We're gonna stay live, so stay with us. As we'll take a quick opportunity to thank our Many presenting partners of today's match, including TFC, Gatorade, Respect in Sports, Soccer X, Sports Engine, Nothers, the Awards Store, Canada Soccer. So many great partners coming together to present an incredible 2021 OPDL season. And it all culminates here today with the final match of six. OPDL Charity Shield matches played this weekend and we wrap up the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield campaign with Ottawa TFC 
securing a 3-1 victory over Markham in the girls under 17 competition. A big shout out to our great crew behind the scenes led by Quazy and all the Ontario soccer staff for all their hard work. Ben Rycroft doing yeoman's work behind the scenes. A big team of people coming together to make this weekend and of course our broadcasts possible. My name's Nico Cartarelli. I'm in the fortunate position to describe what's been going on here for two of the three matches today, including that last match in the girls under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield final between Ottawa TFC, who were victorious 3-1 to one over Markham. And it's been my pleasure to be here all weekend in a variety of capacities and a real pleasure and honor to close out things this weekend on the mic for today's play-by-play -play. and a big win by Ottawa TFC. We're getting set for the post-match celebration and trophy presentation. And in just a few moments, we will see Ottawa TFC engrave their name into OPDL history. Well, I guess they've technically just now did engrave their name into history. But in just a few moments, we will see Ottawa TFC hoist the beautiful Gary Miller Charity Shield Trophy, which was tastefully updated by Nothers, the award store. For more than 50 years, Nothers, the award store, has been a leading supplier of awards and recognition products across Ontario, offering complete assistance from program concept planning all the way to product delivery. See how they can help your organization at Nothers.com. As we await the teams for the post-match presentation. We'll also remind folks at home that you can still support the teams and their fundraising efforts by getting your shot at winning the jackpot this weekend by buying a ticket for our special Gary Miller Charity Shield 50-50 raffle at www.rafflebox.ca slash raffle slash Ontario Soccer. Ticket sales close at 11.59 p.m. tonight and the draw will be held tomorrow, November 8th. The winner will be notified shortly thereafter. Because the OPDL, Gary Miller Charity Shield, is not just about competing well on the pitch, but also about doing good in the community. Folks, thanks for your support. And again, head to rafflebox.ca slash raffle slash Ontario Soccer to get your special Gary Miller Charity Shield 50-50 raffle tickets tonight before 9, 11.59 p.m. tonight when sales close. Well, the joy of victory and the agony of defeat here as Ottawa TFC all smiles and Markham a little bit of stunned disbelief on their faces. They've yet to leave their bench but those ladies should be proud of their season. This was their only loss of the 2021 OPDL campaign. Markham came into today with a record of 14 wins, one draw, zero losses. But ultimately they ran into an equally good team and maybe a better team, at least better on today, as Ottawa TFC pick up the 3-1 victory and again, both of these teams came into today with identical records, 14 wins, one draw, zero losses, but Ottawa TFC scoring at almost double the rate of Markham, and in the end today, that proved to be the difference, three to one the scoreline. A tremendous effort from a number of players on both of these teams, some top players that come to mind for me. Katie Fee, although she didn't end up with a goal today, she was a constant threat along the left flank for Ottawa TFC. She created a number of quality opportunities and was an ever-present danger with her 
service and speed along the left flank. Other notable performances for Ottawa TFC, Rachel Vermeer, she had herself one heck of a game, scoring a goal and nearly picking up a brace, only to be denied by the post. But it was a real combined effort, of course. A great game as well from Flavie Dubé. Nora Gee as a substitute coming off the bench. Danica Birch, she had a tremendous match. Leah Francoeur, who picked up a goal in that game. Their keeper, Paige Robert, although she wasn't tested too, too often, she did come up with some timely saves, beaten once today. Robert really with no chance on the Markham goal, but in the second half especially, Robert coming up with some clutch saves to preserve the victory for Ottawa TFC. On the flip side, here comes the Markham squad, and these ladies should be very proud of their performances today. Paige Chiosolo getting the lone goal for Markham in this match. And how about the effort as well from Emma Warren, who set up that goal for Chiosolo. Warren, a true force on the pitch while she played a left back defensive position. She was constantly pushing up the field, creating opportunities. Again, she serviced that cross in for Chiosolo on the goal. How about the performance of Ava Beckett today? She was an absolute warrior out there, taking a number of bumps and knocks, even a boot to the face at one point, but Beckett able to shake it off and provide a truly incredible effort on the back line for Markham, and that's got to make this defeat today that much more bitter for a player like Beckett, who really gave it her all out there today, but... Ultimately, in the end, it proved not quite to be enough for Markham as Ottawa TFC take the victory 3-1 to one here at the Under-17 Girls OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. Well, both teams here for the post-match ceremony, and as a result, we're going to throw it down to our PA announcer, Sandy. Ladies and gentlemen, both teams deserve a big round of applause for their fantastic league season and their terrific effort in this afternoon's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match. Assisting with the awards presentation, our special guests, Joey Lombardi, Ontario REX and Women's Under 20 Director, and representing the Miller family, Cindy, Brianna, and Stephanie. Ladies and gentlemen, it has certainly been an exciting weekend of soccer, showcasing some of Ontario's most talented players while raising significant contributions for some very important charities and having lots of fun in the process. 
This event is one that Gary Miller was involved in creating and implementing back in 2015 when the very first Charity Shield took place. This weekend, Ontario Soccer is honoured to rename the event the Gary Miller Charity Shield. Ontario Soccer would also like to extend a special thank you to the Miller family in attendance here today to help close out this special weekend. Gary Miller will be fondly remembered every year at this event and his legacy to the game of soccer in Ontario will not be forgotten. At this time, we would also like to thank everyone who has participated over the weekend and all those who have helped to raise funds for charities, either through gate admission, 50-50 tickets, the silent auction, or purchasing OPDL t-shirts. All contributions, big or small, make a difference. And now for the awards. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to the teams, please put your hands together as we recognize our match officials who were appointed to the OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match. Our referee, Ms. Julia Friesen. Assistant referee, Angelina Baldino. Assistant referee, Michaela McBride. And this afternoon's fourth official, Daniel Jacob. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us recognize the teams. Starting with the finalists, Markham SC. <laughs> Wearing number double zero, Gurleen Tour. Wearing number one, Tyler Ducart. Wearing number two, Julia Palumbo. Wearing number six, Holly Whelan. Wearing number eight, Julia Cochran. Wearing number nine, Alia Kamdar. Wearing number 10, Madison Mariani. Wearing number 11, Sove Dean. Wearing number 14, Samantha Gravina. Wearing number 15, Ava Beckett. Wearing number 17, Trinity Coito. Wearing number 18, Emma Warren. Wearing number 19, Emma Koss. Wearing number 22, Sophia Leovas. Wearing number 27, Farah Yacoub. Wearing number 37, Paige Chiusolo. And wearing number four, Raquel Alexander. Team head coach, Laura Goss, assistant coaches, Richard Alexander and Sarah Alexander, and also an assistant coach, Sina Azimi. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a big hand, please, for the Markham Soccer Club. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for your 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield winners Ottawa TFC. We'd like to start by recognizing the club president, Terry Vita. All proceeds from today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match will be donated to charity. Ottawa TFC has chosen to donate these funds to the Orleans Cumberland Community Respace Centre. The center offers counseling, groups, workshops, and recreational activities for children and youth from grades one to 12. Programs offer great opportunities for children and youth to receive support for their social and emotional well-being. Congratulations to the Ottawa TFC for a successful OPDL season. And now for the team. Wearing number 15, Ava Singh. Wearing number two, Taylor Robichaud. Wearing number one, Haley Jones. Wearing number four, Rachel Vermeer. Wearing number five, Peyton Wynn. Wearing number six, Christine Abelmeyer. Wearing number seven, Katie Fee. Wearing number eight, Leah Francoeur. 
Wearing number nine, Devin Vermeer. Wearing number 10, Flavi Dubé. Wearing number 11, Shoban Messenger. Wearing number 12, Maya Galco. Wearing number 14, Jessica Boyle. Wearing number 16, Riley Bonadi. Wearing number 17, Paige Robert. Wearing number 18, Zoe Lorty. Wearing number 19, Danica Birch. Wearing number 22, Nora Gee. Wearing number 27, Emily Boyle. And wearing number 55, Mackenzie Curran. Team manager, Patrick Boyle. Team head coach, Pavel Kankura. Now, we'd like to call upon the team captain of Ottawa TFC to receive the 2021 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield on behalf of the winning team. Well, congratulations to Ottawa TFC. Your winners here at the 2021 <laughs> OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. We've had so much fun this weekend. We got a laugh to close things out here. Again, a great effort by all our folks behind the scenes. And one final thank you again to our proud partners for today's event, our premier partners, Toronto FC, our program partners, Gatorade, as well as Respected Sports, Soccer X, Sports Engine, Nothers the Award Store, and of course, our sport partners, Canada Soccer. Folks, I'm Nico Cardarelli. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time live on the Ontario Soccer Streaming Channel.